Industry finds that about one-fourth of skilled nursing facilities reported false positives from antigen tests, and nursing homes face threats of citations and penalties if they restrict visitor access without a good cause. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I am Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020. To stay in love Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. About 20 to 25% of skilled nursing facilities have received false positive results from their COVID-19 point-of-care antigen testing devices, a joint survey conducted by the American Healthcare Association and Leading Age revealed. Providers said that those false positive results were later found to be incorrect after using poly polymerase, chain reaction, or PCR testing. A vast majority of SNFs also reported that they only had one to three potential false positives, while just 3% have experienced more than five potential false positive results. The groups collaborated on the survey to understand the use of the Beckton Dixon Virator and Quidel Sophia II point of care antigen systems among skilled nursing facilities, which were sent to all nursing homes by the federal government to aid their testing efforts. It comes after reports that some antigen testing equipment was producing false positive results for some providers. Both BD and Quidel are conducting investigations to ensure the quality of their equipment and preliminary results haven't revealed any abnormalities, according to the groups. HCA and Leading Age encourage providers to continue using the point-of-care testing systems and to reach out to BD Verider or Quidel to report any potential false positives. They also encourage providers to follow federal guidance on when to conduct confirmation testing with PCRs after receiving positive antigen results. Experts earlier this year stated that one of the benefits of the antigen tests is the re reliability of a positive result. It was thought that those who tested positive for COVID-19 with the point of care tests truly are, while those who test negative may want to double check the results with the established polymerase chain reaction testing. The study finds seem to co contradict this earlier notion. Providers who fail to facilitate in-person visitations without reasonable clinical or safety cause could be cited and face other penalties under new guidance issued on Thursday by CMS. The agency updated its guidance on nursing home visitation during the COVID-19 pandemic, which creates a framework for providers to facilitate in-home visitation and resume communal activities and dining. The agency stated in a memo that it believes the guidance represents reasonable ways a nursing home can facilitate in-person visitation and failure to do so, quote, without adequate reason related to clinical necessity or resident safety would constitute a, pot a potential violation. It could also lead to a citation and enforcement actions. The guidance explains that outdoor visits are preferred because it poses a lower risk of transmission due to increased space and airflow. Facilities should accommodate and support indoor visits beyond compassionate care situations if there have been no new cases in the last 14 days and visitors adhere to core principles. Providers must adhere to the core principles of COVID-19 infection prevention in order to conduct visits. Those principles include screening everyone who enters the facility, cleaning and disinfecting frequently touched areas often, and conducting resident and staff testing. Nursing homes can restrict access to visitors who don't adhere to the core principles. Nursing homes also should limit the number of visitors per resident and the number of visitors in the facility at a single moment and, and limit movement within the facility. The guidance also re recommends that visits can occur at facilities in areas with low or medium COVID-19 county positivity rates, while visits at facilities in areas with high rates should only occur for compassionate care situations. The moves come a half year after the agency suspended visitor access, communal dining, and all group activities in mid-March. CMS stated that through the initial guidance was focused on protecting residents from COVID-19 and has since recognized that physical separation from family and other loved ones has taken a physical and emotional toll on residents. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Wednesday.